I'm, I want to move now, if I may, to a story uh, which has made the news this morning. And this is about the BBC. Now, BBC News presenter did breach impartiality rules. So says the BBC uh, Corporation. The remarks were made during uh, the News Channel's newspaper review on the 23rd of October. This was after Boris Johnson said he wouldn't stand as a Tory leader. Now, essentially... The BBC has said her remarks and reactions caused a significant risk. The audience could believe opinions were being expressed on the Conservative leadership contest. That is according to the BBC. Now, I watched this, and at the time, I was absolutely gobsmacked by what Martin Croxall had said. The whole point of being a presenter at the BBC, and I was there for a very long time, is you have to remain impartial. It is part of the editorial standards. Now, I'm going to show you the clip. But essentially, this was the uh, the newspaper review. The programme aired around 90 minutes after the former Prime Minister claimed to have enough support to progress in the Tory leadership race, but decided that he would actually withdraw instead. So as the paper's programme began, this was about 22.30 on Sunday evening, this is what she said. Well, this is all very exciting, isn't it? Hello and welcome to our look ahead to what the papers will be bringing us tomorrow. Am I allowed to be this gleeful? Well, I am. No. You're not. That's the point. You meant to be impartial. And clearly she expressed opinion there. And quite frankly, at the time, I thought it was totally uh, unacceptable. And um, so clearly uh, the BBC now has come out with uh, with a statement. It says that this means the edition of the papers did not meet our editorial standards as it gave the audience the opportunity to infer an editorial position on the part of the BBC. And this does not accord with the BBC's commitment to editorial impartiality. Now, the most surprising thing about this to me is I think that's a sackable offence. However, she is back on air at 11 o'clock this morning. So what has happened to impartiality at the BBC? Joining me now is Rebecca Ryan, who's campaign director at Defund the BBC. Good morning to you. Morning, David. Were you as shocked as I was? Well, that she's been allowed to keep her job. Well, no, first of all, what she said. <laughs> I, I, I think the, the fact that she showed that sort of sheer excitement was, yeah, it was, it was quite shocking. But we all, we all know that, you know, the presenters and, and a lot of people at the BBC have these kind of views and would have been doing that off camera. But yeah, it was, it was really quite shocking to see that um, live on TV, absolutely. Um, but the fact that she's um, been allowed to keep her job, as you say, this is a, it's a sackable offence. It certainly should be. You know, if the BBC can't get rid of a presenter that shows that flagrant disregard for the obligations that the BBC has, because the BBC has those obligations to be impartial in, in order for being able to raise uh, their their finances via general taxation, that's that's you know the, the contract that they have with the British people, um, and when they breach that contract, absolutely there needs to be serious punishment for that, and she should have lost her job. Well, I mean, interestingly, at the BBC, I mean, I think there are certain distinct categories. If she'd done it on a program that wasn't news based, I think there could be an argument to say it was an expression of opinion, which you are allowed to do as long as there is a counter opinion. But it wasn't. This is a news broadcaster. This is a news channel. This is meant to be impartial. And I find it extraordinary the BBC cannot see the gravity of the situation. Absolutely. And it's really quite shocking, isn't it? When they're supposed to be, you know, trying to get their house in order and trying to fight for the survival of at least the licence fee, um, if not the BBC in general. So the fact that they can't take this seriously um, and and uh, give her the punishment that she requires, you know, for the actions that she's taken, um, it, it should be worrying for everybody. Well, just uh, I've just had a message here, actually, from Trudy mm. saying how hypocritical mm. of the BBC to suspend a colleague for not acting impartially and then, uh, then obviously not getting rid of them. Anyone can tell the BBC is pro-Labour by their biased news headlines trashing the Tories every day. I think there is a real disconnect now. I think, mm -hmm. obviously... The fact is, we are made to pay the BBC licence fee. If, if yes. you don't pay it, obviously it's, it's an offence and you're meant to pay that BBC licence fee. Well, why should we pay for something which clearly isn't impartial? I think they're shooting themselves in the foot. Absolutely. I mean, like, like I said, it's in their charter. The charter that means that they're able to uh, have the licence fee, that they have to be impartial. Now, time and time again, we see that they're not impartial and this you know, is just absolutely blatant. And the fact that the BBC have chosen to keep her in that position 
uh, is, is really shocking because it shows that they just don't care about what their obligations are. And you said there that we have to pay for the license fee, but actually if we only if we watch live TV or BBC iPlayer. So more and more people are realizing that if you watch on demand or catch up, as long as it's not BBC iPlayer, you don't have to pay the TV license fee anymore. And people are, you know, clocking onto this and switching off. So that is really interesting because um, mm. you are made to believe that if you have a television set, that is, and I had a conversation with TV licensing over this, if you have a television which is plugged into a wall, you have to pay the license fee. No, that's not the case. It used to be the case that if you had a TV, you know, a television set, but that was because it was regarded at, at that point that you could only, you only had a TV set to watch live TV. Now that you have smart TVs, you can have a TV set in your room only for playing on the Xbox. You know, you can have a TV set only for watching Netflix. None of those are watching live TV and that's what the license covers. So now you, you, you can have a TV without that. So how on earth do they enforce that? Because if they come round, you just say, I don't watch BBC television. Absolutely, it's unpoliceable. That's another reason why the license fee has to go because there's no way that they can police that without actually catching you watching live TV. So, you know, it, it, the, the, the reason why their, their language is pretty sort of um, murky in their letters and on their website is because they, they, they don't want people to necessarily know that if, if you, can, you can have a TV, you can watch Netflix, there's a lot of on-demand content that you can watch without having a TV license. And as soon as people realise that and more and more people are, you know, cottoning onto it, then, you know, the licence fee is in serious trouble. Well, we spoke about this yesterday. They're culling a lot of the local radio stations. I think that's a major mistake because, of course, that is what uh, people need in the country, particularly to, for the travel, for the weather, for uh, stuff that's going on near them. I actually think the BBC is doing a very good job at destroying itself. It doesn't need a, an external organisation to do it any longer. <laughs> well, they do keep helping us, that's for sure. You know, every time they make a mistake, then we get more support and, you know, more and more people are just outraged and looking for ways to stop funding this organisation. So, absolutely, um, they are doing a very good job of it themselves. So, so, just in terms of what you're calling for is obviously defunding the BBC, but I suppose you would like it to continue, but on a, it with a different economic model, so a subscription-only service, for example. Either subscription or with advertising. I mean, it's not really for people who don't watch the BBC to to decide how they fund it. It should be, you know, it should go to a commercial footing. It should give the likes of Netflix and Amazon Prime a run for their money. It should move into the digital age. Um, and, you know, it has a fighting chance, as long as it moves quickly, of, you know, carrying on as an entity. But it needs to be producing content that people want to pay for. And at the moment, it's not doing that. It's just pressurising people on their doorsteps. It's bullying people on their doorsteps, vulnerable Britons into paying for something when they're not producing content that they're being forced to pay for. And that's, you know, that's, you know, a, a real injustice, which British people really, you know, rail against. You know, if they go onto a commercial basis and they provide a service that people want to pay for, then great. Nobody has a problem with that. No, absolutely. It'll be very interesting to see what happens. I think Nadine Doris had made it clear the BBC may well go, but we'll see what happens from here. But thank you so much for your time. That's Rebecca Ryan, campaign director at Defund uh, the BBC.